right, welcome to the webinar, everybody. And for those that will be watching later, thanks for joining then as well. We're talking about creating a RV park website that converts. It's about design and content and functionality. And if we do these things, we find some good success online. And that's what we're about with rest and relax ROI. We're exclusively exclusively partnering up with RV parks, resorts, and campgrounds. We're an Arvic member, so glad to be a part of that. And we talk about the M5 a good bit. It is an RV park-centric marketing system. And you can see the little graphic here. We focus on these four areas of reputation, resale, reach, and retarget. And so today's conversation really kind of goes around uh, the reach, resell kind of portion of your marketing. So I am your host. My name is Mark Rowan. You might have thought it was Rowan, but you would have been mistaken, and that's okay. Heard it all my life. I grew up on a working West Virginia sheep farm slash campground. That was a lot of fun. I studied comms at the world's most exciting university, Liberty, in Virginia, where I met my college sweetheart, Jenny. And we got married in October 2000. And now we have four awesome kids, Lena Kay, Cassia, Josiah, and Addie. We do have Holly rounds out the crew. And I've been personally helping company with companies with our online presence for more than 20 years. So uh, it's been a fun journey. Enjoy that for sure. And uh, this agency we've been uh, running for since 2014. Getting it going. All right, today we have some objectives that we want to leave with. Three areas to really enhance your website that will help you convert website visitors to RV park guests. So that's a good idea. So we'll have actionable information you can leave with today. So no matter what you have or don't have, I think you'll be able to take some information and improve upon. So if you have any questions, obviously you can always drop them in the chat or in the comments uh, when you're watching this at a later time. I'm glad to answer them. All right, so let's take a look at the benefits of a well-designed site. Um, number one, attracting more visitors and then converting them to guests. I think that's a good benefit. Creating a positive user experience, showcasing beauty and amenities. So if you've got some beauty, you want people to let people know about it. And then the idea of having a cohesive identity that reflects your park. Um, you want the experience. If you have a great experience in real life, you want to start that out uh, on your website because that's probably where a um, vast majority of guests will see you first. And it encourages visitors to take action. And it makes it easy for them to find what they're looking for. And it's easier to access info about your park on all their devices. So we'll be diving into more of this as we journey on. All right. If you've ever been on one of our, our webinars, you've seen this little sad RV. Don't be a web. Don't have a website. That's the equivalent of a little sad RV. Um, so has anyone ever told you that your website sucks? Um, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But probably most people are not going to say that to your face. They're too nice, which is not a bad thing. But here's some common issues we encounter. High bounce rates. So that means people leave as soon as they get to your site. Poor search results, just in general, not showing up for the things that you should be. Slow loading times, that's a problem. Inconsistent branding, you know, if you've got different logos because you've been around for a long time, using them in different areas, other things of that nature. Difficult navigation, don't be confusing. And not, no, not being mobile friendly, those are bad. All right, we always like to throw some stats your way. Just to back up what we're talking about, we are alone are not the only ones that realize that this is important because 94% of first impressions are related to web design. That's the world we live in. People go on their smartphones to find out more about businesses and you're no exception. And it only takes 0 0.05 seconds to form an opinion on a website. That's not very long. And a well-designed user interface could raise conversion rates up to 200%. So um, 
There you go. That's good stuff. Companies prioritizing design are 50% more likely to see higher ROI. And then 46.1% of our users said web design was top criteria for deciding a company was credible or not. That's a pretty big number. Almost 50% of the people are, are judging you pretty hardcore based on what your site looks like. And 38% of visitors will stop engaging with website if the content or layout is unattractive. So nearly 40% of people will just go ahead and quit if they get to your site and it's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. So yeah, it's important. And we're gonna be talking about these areas, design, content, and functionality. So let's jump right into the first one. Let's talk about design. So clean and attractive design. It's a aesthetically pleasing that reflects the beauty of your park. Um, like we talked about earlier, you know, RV parks are all about, you know, having a good time and enjoying yourself. Make sure that that's part of it. Consistent use of color, typography, and imagery. The cohesiveness is something we'll touch on a few different times. Um, you know, don't go overboard with too many colors, too many fonts, which is the typography. Uh, the imagery needs to be consistent as far as uh, the quality as well. And then this is a design thing. And I, you know, studied design and all that in the back in the day when I was a young man. And uh, this is always a, a thing that we need to pay attention to effectively using white space. So just don't try to cram too much stuff in that helps your readability and be, the ability to draw people eyes to the really important stuff on your site. So mobile friendly, uh, we all know that phones are a big deal. Most people have them within not just arm's reach, it's like literally mine's like six inches away from me. And I'm sure most people's are. So it is very important. We all know this. 63% of Google searches are on a mobile device. And uh, that number, I mean, there's a lots of data that talks about how much people are on their phone. Uh, so just in general, um, it's a lot. Responsive design that adapts to different screen sizes and resolutions. So that's all about the mobile friendly. You see this graphic here, you know, you get this some, the same type of design on any device, but it is formatted appropriately for that device. That's important. And then the fast loading times to enhance user experience, it will also help with search and results. So it's all tied together. Uh, Google, for instance, who's pretty much the one that's uh, dictating uh, the majority of search engine um, usage. Um, they're going to look at how fast your site is. And of course, the user experience is very dictated by and if it takes too long to see what they want to see. Uh, they're going to, that's the whole bounce rate that we talked about before. It's going to affect that. Easy navigation. Um, so intuitive navigation that's allowing your users and visitors to easily find what they're looking for. You wanna have clear, concise labels for menus and links. So we wanna stay away from crazy fonts. So now sometimes, you know, we wanna get creative with how we um, do things and creativity is good, but not at the expense of people being understand, being able to understand what's happening. So uh, we've uh, probably all seen some font usage in our lifetime that made it more difficult to understand what was going on. You can see this example that we added here for this RV park, you know, the, the menu is easy to read. Bread com, bread crumbs help users navigate back to previous pages. So if you're not familiar uh, with that term, of course we all know what that means in uh, the story of Hansel and Gretel, but uh, helping them find your way back home. So that's usually found um, below the menu and the header spec part of your website and above the content. Uh, so that's a good thing to help usability on your site, uh, especially if you have pages that are, um, you know, a parent page and then below that child pages. Um, the more pages you have, the more important those kind of things are. So the imagery is uh, important. People want to know what you have to offer. So make sure those photos are of good quality. Once again, we're gonna showcase the, the beauty and the amenities and all the different things that you have to offer. Um, make it beautiful. 
the consistent use of imagery. We've kind of uh, referenced that earlier. Um, this idea of cohesiveness um, is all part of a good design. Um, so don't have some photos that, you know, are super professional. The other ones that, you know, like my granny would always cut someone's head off whenever she took a picture of a group of people. So we want to have the same quality no, no matter what uh, images you have. I wouldn't say you want the same quality of crappy photos, but let's go on the high end. Let's try to do, do better. Um, and the file size, that's important too. So you can have, you got to find that happy medium of um, getting good quality, but not having huge files so they can improve your loading times on your website. Once again, it's going to affect your SERPs, which is search engine result pages. That's what SCRP is. And uh, so, yeah, you know, there's plenty of programs now that allow you to uh, resize and optimize your photo sizes. Call to action buttons. Uh, Happy Traveler here has a couple of uh, call to action buttons, as you can see. You want them to be clear and prominent uh, of those CDA call to action buttons. Use persuasive language to encourage you to take actions. The idea is don't make your visitors wonder what they should do next. You want to be directing how they should be traversing your website. What it is, what's the main thing you want them to do? You want to highlight that. I mean, there's, I'm sure, a lot of great things that you want to share about your park. Um, and that's one reason why we're not a big fan and for several years have been this, not a big fan of the sliders. Um, you know, like it's changes. It used to be very common on websites like this picture you see in this example, you know, and then it would slide to another thing, another thing. The reality is people don't necessarily wait around to watch all your slides. So pick something that's great. And of course you can swap it out and then make it very clear what you want them to do uh, when they come to your site. You know, this above the full content, as we call it here in the hero section, as you can see, it's where it has a big image and it's the main part of your site. That's the best and the most important real estate online for you. Um, because number one, you, we talk about Google and there's other things you can put your website on, which we recommend. But at the end of the day, you own your website. This is yours. So you need to make sure it is optimized to produce the results you're looking for. So once again, consistency in design and the placement of call to action throughout the website. So once again, we talked about colors being consistent, not using too many. So make it easy to recognize, hey, we're gonna use this color. Um, and of course, you can see they're using a blue color and it matches their branding. A lot of times the red or an orange is you know, people that are drawn to those colors and you wanna make sure people are noticing those things and using, uh, don't switch it up for every different part of the site. The use of video, we're doing video right now and um, this will be up on our YouTube channel later. Um, you want to leverage that as much as possible. We want to showcase what you have to offer. Um, that's always a great idea. High quality, once again, that showcases the, your beauty and the surroundings that are not only on your park, but off um, site. To let people know if they're not familiar what you have to offer in your area. Um, then you're talking about like this particular example with Campbell Cove. It's a virtual tour of the park is always a great idea. And then there's several um, providers that can do that for you. You may have run across some of them um, up there in uh, the wild, so to speak. And then testimonials from some of your best RVers. So if you can get somebody that's like, has consistently come to your park and you have a great relationship with them and they're willing to jump in front of you, uh, the cameras and uh, and talk about what you have to offer. That's always huge. So that would be a great get. Um, and high quality video doesn't mean you necessarily have to hire a you know video production company because just like we said, we got our phone close to us at all times. Well, now they are basically the equivalent of having a you know video production quality of right in your pocket. So you can leverage that. So we said the surrounding attractions. So you could go out there, maybe you have some 
good relationships with some of the attractions that are nearby and they may have a video they'll let you use. So those would be uh, great additions. Accessibility. So this is important um, to consider as well for people to have disabilities. You want to make it easy for them uh, and using alt text for images and videos to provide descriptions for users who are visually impaired, for instance. So alt text is not something that you would normally see uh, just on a website, but it is in the code, so to speak. Um, we've talked about in other webinars as it relates to SEO and how that's effective for that. Uh, so there's another use for it here. And of course, high contrast colors, easy to read fonts for people that have low vision. Uh, even if it's not an accessibility issue, just that's a good um, design practice to follow. And then here's a couple uh, providers that you can uh, utilize on your site, UserWay or WP Accessibility can help you do that. Um, so you don't have to start from the ground up. Check those out. Branding is a big part of the design. You want to be consistent, as we've said, throughout the site to create that cohesive identity we've been talking about. Um, so the longer you've been around, the more likely you might have an old version of your logo hangout. So just be aware that you want to update um, everything that you have online, not only on your site, but other places as well. And you're going to use that to establish your unique sell selling proposition or the USP your RV park. So connect your branding to who you are wanting to communicate with. And in that vein, consider the target audience when creating branding elements. Um, so if you're in the market for a new logo, you know, think about what that's going to look like and who are you trying to attract. All right, we're on to the second section, and this is all about content. We already just mentioned the unique value proposition. So uh, that's what we want to do with your content, right? Clearly define what that is for your park. You know, every park is unique in itself. So you want to communicate that as um, effectively as possible. So just highlight what sets you apart from other ones. The competitors is kind of a funny term. Um, <clears throat> I don't think most people are thinking that vein in this space, uh, but just other options that people have, you want to make sure that you're communicating how you are different. Why would someone come to your space as opposed to the ones on the other part of town? And then you're going to communicate those benefits of staying with you. So you want to have compelling headlines and subheadings. Uh, we've got the old Yogi Bear Example over here, camping will never be the same. Well, that's a that's a pretty um, compelling headline uh, to put out before us. Uh, so you want to use those type of things where you're grabbing the attention for the headline and subheadings to really draw people into what you want them to do. So you can see here they got this fun uh, promise of how you won't ever be the same because you camp with them. And then right below it says book down. And of course, you can see here that they've got this design and branding consistency with the colors and the uh, their call to action for book now is a good example of how to do that well. You're going to incorporate keywords to improve search engine optimization within the SEO. So, you know, you can use the town you're in or attractions and things of that nature in your headlines that will help you be found easier. So concise, clear messaging that conveys the benefits of staying at the park once again. Engaging copy. Uh, so you're going to use engaging persuasive language to describe the RV parks, amenities, and activities. Don't so just write it to get it done. Think about how uh, you can uh, effectively get people excited and, you know, get some emotion out of uh, what you have to offer because, you know, this is a fun thing that people are doing when they visit you. You know, once again, highlighting the park's unique features and off offerings. Addressing common questions. This is big, right? We'll talk a little bit more about this and the concerns that may arise. So the other thing about engaging copy, think about telling unique stories that 
are particular for you and uh, your part, you know, whether you want to tell a story of your history, maybe get some campers um, insight and perspective. Um, once again, you could go to the surrounding areas and the attractions and maybe get some of their story that you can share about. Um, don't just be putting just the basic bullet points all the time. Some things bullet points are great for, but when you're really trying to engage the visitor to help them understand why uh, you're a great place to visit, you can go to that next level of, you know, telling stories as opposed to just putting words on the website. Testimonials and reviews, these are huge. We've talked about these in other webinars and, um, and how this is um, just a great thing to have. I think everybody understands this. It's providing social proof and builds trust with, your, with the potential uh, guests that are coming in. So you want to incorporate those that highlight, you know, that USP um, once again. And then if you have some great reviews on other sites like TripAdvisor or Google, you can also incorporate those. So I recommend doing that as much as possible. Try to find ways to consistently develop those um, reviews as far as getting them um, coming in. Uh, that's just going to help, obviously, more and more. It's a good signal for Google, especially if you're doing Google reviews, um, to help your search engine results as well. So pricing, people are going to want to know about that. Um, and you want to clearly outline it. Different packages you may have to offer. Um, and the, whatever pricing that you have, or wh whether it's staying a night or other things that you offer. You know, provide detailed information about what's included, and then just make sure it's simple and easy to understand, just like the rest of your site. So FAQs, we talked a little bit about, you know, answering people's questions, you know, the common concerns that people might have. Just have that FAQ page. We've all seen it on many different sites. So we want to anticipate what those might be and provide some great answers on that. And once again, integrating the keywords for SEO purposes is great because uh, those are probably what the people are looking for anyway. So it's a, the SEO is just not, it's not gaming the system. It's like, these are things that people search for and uh, because they're searching for them it's, and you're answering those questions, it's gonna help your website be more relevant. Uh, if you don't know, where your location is, uh, neither will the people that are coming. So I want to make sure <laughs> you've got that. Um, clear and concise directions to the park includes landmarks and attractions, points of interest. Um, use a map to make it easy for visitors to find the park. So, you know, it's pretty easy nowadays to whether, you know, most sites have the ability to just put your address in and then it pulls up like a Google map and that sort of thing. So at the very least you could do that. And of course, maps are a big deal for most RV parks. Um, you know, you guys have them printed out and things of that nature. You should be able to have a digital version of that that you can use as well that uh, is specific to your park. So definitely, if you haven't done it, check it out. Up-to-date information. So this is good. So anything online, you want to make sure that it's being updated, it's accurate. Um, maybe if you change your phone number, um, I mean, it's possible that your address changed. It's not quite as common as other businesses moving around, uh, but anything that may change, you want to, if it's changing, um, for whatever reason, you, you change it on the site. You also want to make sure that information is updated on business listings that are not on your website and be regular about, you know, what's going on with your activities, your amenities, the events that are around. Uh, all, you know, there's going to be people that are very interested in knowing what's available, not only on your on the park, but maybe in the area. Uh, you can use your blog to do that. And any kind of news that you want to keep your visitor informed about, uh, just like I said, whether it's on in your park or around your park. The last section we're going to talk about is the functionality. Um, maybe a little bit more technical in some areas, but Online reservation system. Okay, everybody knows about these this these days. Uh, I think there's um, 
I don't know what the percentage are, is now, but there's still people out there that are not doing it. And that's why there's so many options. Um, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to come stay with you. And, and this is the thing that people are being trained to, to expect uh, is to be able to get things done online. So make sure that uh, you have that availability as well. You want to make it uh, easy to use. And there's uh, lots of different um, people out there with uh, options to do this. Um, of course, Rover Pass is shown in, in this example. Camp Spot, and then you probably heard of that. Camp Life, well, shout out to Tyler. Um, we know um, those guys over there. And of course, Park, Reserved by Park Ryland. He's a friend. He's been on our podcast. These are some great options. So it really depends on what your particular needs are and, the, and whether or not you know, you're going to need all the different things they have. Uh, some of them cost you money, some of them don't. Um, so it depends on, once again, what's your needs. Interactive map and virtual tours. Talked about maps earlier, you know, navigating your park, location, many campsites, features, all that. Of course, you can see right here what I was referring to earlier uh, as an example of the photo here, customized map, that's huge. Um, the virtual tour. We talked about with that in the video section, um, giving previews of what to expect when they arrive. Um, I think that's become very popular in recent years, of course. Um, so we recommend that that's something you add um, when it is the right time for you. Um, right, all right. Weather and local information. Weather's a big deal for people that would be traveling and, and uh, that sort of thing. So if you can add that, that would be great. Plan helps them plan, and you, you can provide up to date weather forecasts for the area and the surrounding park. Um, and then, of course, you can include local attractions, restaurants, events, and the like. That's uh, really good for people, especially if you're a destination um, place and it's not necessarily like a stopover. Um, people are going to want to know what they can do while they're in your area. Social media is a huge part of today's online experience. You want to integrate that uh, to connect with visitors. Uh, you want to include the links on uh, to your profiles on the website. And so I've seen this a lot of times. People have the logos at the bottom of their page or wherever, and they don't link to anything. So make sure if you've got those profiles set up, or if you don't, that's the other problem. Some people just oh, we have the icons, we put them up there and they just don't go anywhere because they haven't set them up. Well, that just caused confusion. So if you have them, make sure they're linked. If you don't have them, don't add the logos. So a little tip. And of course you can uh, have the feed directly on your site, whether that's Twitter or Instagram. Um, definitely Instagram is a good one to do. You can show them, it just updates automatically the uh, recent posts you've done and people can keep up with that when they visit your site. So contact forms and live chat. All right. So uh, I think everybody's familiar with what a contact form is, and it's going to make it easier for people to ask their questions, get inquiries taken care of. You're going to provide a clear, easy-to-use contact form that can, visitors can use to get in touch with, right? But don't ask for too much info um, just because you don't want to put too many barriers up, right? And then live chat. It's that real-time support and assistance to visitors. As you can see, this stat here, there's 73% of the people uh, surveyed preferred live chat over email or phone support. So not once again, like people have been trained to use uh, online reservations or use their phones, live chats become a big um, tool that it's used on a regular basis. People are used to it and uh, Definitely recommend integrating that uh, on your site. Analytics and tracking. So uh, this is good to know uh, what to do to maybe improve things or change things. You know, measure the success of your site. And you can check out metrics like traffic. And we mentioned bounce rate and conversion rate. So conversion rate is... Um, the ability to see how many people come on your site. Maybe you're running ads. 
and on Google, and then you're able to see how many of those ads turn into actual bookings. Um, those are important numbers to know to figure out whether or not what you're doing is effective. And then, of course, using that data to make informed decisions about the site design and content. So if you're running these ad campaigns or just in general, just trying to figure out what's going on when people visit your site, this is a big part of making sure that what you're doing is working or if it's not working, okay, now we need to tweak something, we need to update this, we need to change something. So this is a big part of having a successful site. Site security maintenance, another thing, it's kind of like, oh, okay, uh, doesn't sound like super exciting, but it's important. You wanna have these measures in place to protect not only your site, but the people that are on that and their data. Regular maintenance and updates will help your site be running smooth in, smoothly. If you have somebody that set up your site like two years ago and it's never been touched, you know, that's just not a great practice uh, to be following. Uh, you want to have secure hosting and SSL encryption. So that's the little lockbox at the top of the site that you see in the browser, um, at the top of the browser there. And once again, protecting customer information and gives, gives people peace of mind. It's another uh, one of those things that search engines are paying attention to, whether or not you're secure. All right, we got CRMs in email marketing, making sure that you're integrating those kind of things. Um, so you're at the customer relationship management to manage your leads and your customer info. Some of these online reservation systems uh, offer this as part of it. Uh, also email marketing, being able to communicate with not only potential guests, but also your existing um, guests as well. And then you can integrate you know, with email marketing tools like maybe MailChimp or Constant Contact or Rest and Relax ROI M5 system, which does those very things in um, email marketing and just keeping in contact with people. Those are huge things. Uh, and if you didn't uh, know, we'll talk a little bit more about in a second with the email marketing because it's what we cover today, design content and functionality. Um, but next time we are going to be talking about email marketing specifically. So um, we're so glad that you were able to come along and I'm going to check to see if we have any questions today. Um, we've got a little. Yeah, someone's saying Bobby uh, is talking about Firefly Reservations is his company. OK, so Bobby does reservations. Very cool. And it's simple. Most of our parks are live within 72 hours. Well, good to know, Bobby. So that's another um, solution that's out there. Um, said for those that are um, uh, might be watching this at a later time, if you have any questions, be sure to put those in the comments as well. Um, you can always connect with us on social media. You can look up Rest Relax ROI. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, YouTube, we're all over the place. And like I said, next month, we're going to be talking about harnessing the power of email marketing. Let's talk about building lists and campaigns and how to uh, improve open rates. All those kind of things are going to be on next month's webinar. And typically, we are um, broadcasting our live webinars the last Thursday of the month. So keep that in mind. Uh, if nobody else has any questions this time around, we will um, catch you all next time. And of course, if you have any more questions that you think of at a later date, we'd love to chat with you. And you can do that at book.restrelaxri.com. All right. All right. Well, cool, Bobby. Yeah, we're glad that you uh, showed up. And yeah, if there's anything that we can help you out with in the future, let us know. And uh, for everybody else, until next time, happy trails.